Hello everyone, my name is Stephanie and welcome to my channel. This is my dog Finch. He's not usually in my videos, but for some reason today he wants to be in it. So hopefully he won't be too distracting. And in this video, I want to talk to you about what happens to your heart when you pray for those you don't like. When we pray for, not against, not complaining about, but when we pray for our enemies, the people who are outright against us and don't even hide it, as well as the people who just irritate us for some reason. When we pray for them, we are turning our heart from anger to mercy. And seven things will run through your mind, or at least these are the seven things that I thought of um, that run through my mind when I pray for people I don't like. Number one, you remember the mercy that God has had on you. In the parable of the unforgiving servant in Matthew 18, Jesus tells us through a story about this great king who forgave one of his servants a debt that he could never pay. And directly after being forgiven, that servant found a fellow brother or sister, neighbor, friend, colleague, or enemy who owed him a, a much smaller amount and was completely unmerciful with him. And he threw him in prison until he could pay him back. And then the king finds out about it and rebukes the unmerciful servant. Second thing that happens is you remember that the merciful receive mercy. This is a blessing that Jesus pronounced on us in Matthew 5. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. And the third thing that happens is you judge yourself. In Matthew 7, 1 through 5, Jesus talks about judging others and how we are so quick to see the speck in our neighbor's eye but ignore the log sticking out of our own eye. So when you go to God in prayer and you start off complaining, let's be honest, about this person, you will remember you're not perfect. You'll remember that you have sinned. You'll remember that you can be irritating. And it will be easier to forgive or ask God to bless whoever this person is in your life. The fourth thing that happens is you remember God has commanded you to bless those who curse you. In Matthew 7, Jesus teaches us this, that we are to love and pray for and ask blessing and be a blessing upon everyone. Not just the ones that we love or we like, but the people we can't stand. And sometimes the only way we can be a blessing to those people is in prayer. We can ask the Lord to have mercy on them just as he has had mercy on us. We can ask the Lord to reach their hearts just as he reached out for us. We can hope and we can pray for them. The fifth thing that happens is you remember mortality and the shortness of life on earth. You remember that regardless of the circumstances of that person, of their upbringing, of their background, of where they are in life now, who they are, their journey is going to end just as yours is going to end. At most, they may live to be 80. There are some people who live to be in their hundreds, but as God's word says, as God's word says, excuse me, we are all going to die. It's part of life on earth. And when you consider that nothing here is permanent and you remember the mercy that God's had on you and that he commands you to also be merciful, then your mind gets to thinking about, are they a believer or an unbeliever? And if they are a believer, then the sixth thing that happens is you're reminded that's your family. Like them or not, that's your family. You remember we are all part of one body and we are all serving one Lord, Jesus Christ. And the most sobering thought of all, number seven, if they are an unbeliever, you completely understand without Jesus Christ, that person 
that you don't like will go to hell for all eternity unless they have Jesus as their savior, unless they believe in him. And that thought will bring us all down to our knees to beg and plead for their soul. Just as someone may have done the same for you. So to recap, when you pray for those that you don't like, when you pray for those that you hate, you are changing your heart. You remember that God is merciful and he has had mercy on you. You remember that mercy is a blessing and those who give it receive it. You remember you are a sinner and you have problems and that you can't hold yourself any higher than this person because you've been offended. And fourthly, you remember God has commanded you to bless those who curse you. You remember the shortness and the certainty that life will end. Sixth, you remember, if this is a believer, we're in the same family and we, we may not like each other right now, but it will pass. And it can pass if I work on it, if I ask God to soften my heart. Lastly, you remember, if this person doesn't know Jesus, Whatever, whatever offense they've caused me, whatever pain they've caused me, whatever irritation is so minor compared to the eternity of torment they will experience. I pray that this has blessed you and has brought to mind someone that you need to go pray for and ask God to bless. Thank you for watching. Bye.